All right. Today we arrived to Moray. 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 Murray. Murray River. Job. I was cooking dinner. It's Angelica's job to set up the swag. <laughs> That's as far as she got. It's going well. I already set it up at my office. <laughs> done real good. I think I have done a really good job. <laughs> G'day everyone, welcome to episode two. We start off this time on the mighty Murray River, which has some pretty ripper campsites, and as we found out in the morning, some pretty cranky locals too. <laughs> hey, get off there. Just parking the car to set the camp and we are stuck in the sand and I'm going to take the max tracks yeah. uh, I was thinking just as I drove here and then, you know, I thought what's the best thing to stop that <laughs> So as it turns out, the uh, smart fly functions in our drone aren't quite smart enough to not fly itself into a tree. Or maybe it was just Tom that wasn't smart enough. How much your orange, mate? <laughs> How much your orange? Our next stop is the remote World Heritage listed Mungo National Park, which is roughly 110 kilometres northeast of Mildura. Mungo National Park is most famously known for the discovery of the ancient Aboriginal remains of the Mungo Man and the Mungo Woman, which are the oldest known human remains found on the Australian continent. We dropped into the visitor centre to learn about Mungo's Aboriginal and pastoral history before we took a drive across the lake to the walls of China Lunette. We were lucky enough to be taken on a private tour of the walls of China, which is an ancient shoreline that surrounds the Mungo Lake and is close to the resting place of the Mungo Man and the Mungo Woman. Mungo National Park holds a significant importance to the Aboriginal people of this area, and tours to the area are allowed only with an accredited guide, but it's definitely worth the experience. Mungo National Park was always one of our bucket list places to visit, and we can assure you that you will not regret the trip out here. Learning about the Aboriginal history of the area, and even just getting to walk around the walls of China, you really get to understand why this place is so significant to the Aboriginal people. Today we did a walk to the Zanzi, Zanzi Homestead, um, or Zanzi Woolshed. Uh, it's a walk around here that just goes through all the um, pastoral history of the area from the 1800s up until about the 1970s, I think. That's when they farmed this area, sheep mainly, cattle. There's only about 7, seven k's or something all up, going through the sand dunes and stuff. But we're a bit buggered. It was, a, it was a warm day, the sun was on us the whole time, so we thought we'd come back 
and instead of dropping to Menindi, which is about 150 to 200 k's away, I think, we thought we'd just put the hammock up and uh, enjoy the afternoon. After a nice afternoon nap in the hammock, it was time to get a fire going and get some dinner on. We like to cook on the fire whenever we get the chance, and there's not really a better way to cook lamb than in a camp oven. It's as simple as throwing in some salt, pepper and garlic and a couple of potatoes, then chuck it on the fire for about 50 minutes for the perfect lamb roast. After a big feed and some beers around the fire, it was time to get a good night's sleep for the long drive the next day to the Mudawindji National Park. And not before saying goodbye to some of the locals. see behind me. I don't know if you can see the flies on the video but I think they're getting worse the closer we get. But this is a spectacular place. You really get that feeling of um, isolation. left a poo. I think that might be an animal. Because there's lots of goat poos, but I don't know what does a long stringy poo like that other than a poo man. Oh. Alright mate. My way was easier. What about you, but all this rock climber stuff makes me realise I'm not 18 anymore. <laughs> I got a sore knee. place reminds me of that movie, uh, 24 hours. <laughs> sort of climbing through some rocks here, I don't want to get trapped and have to saw me bloody arm off. <sighs> Your laces are undone. Step. Should also make noise in case I have a snake. <laughs> la, 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 la. No, with the food, idiot. Wow. <laughs> okay. Wow. Oh. I'm the king of the rock. After the breathtaking views on top of Split Rock, we were keen to see more of what Mudawindji had to offer. So we took a walk out to the end of the Mudawindji Gorge 
and we found out that this place just keeps on giving. Mudawinji was just a dot on the map that we'd never heard of before, but we took a gamble anyway, and it turned out to be one of the most beautiful places we've seen so far. There's loads of walking tracks, each with a view more picturesque than the last. We really couldn't recommend this place more. So if you ever get the chance, this is definitely one to put on the old bucket list. Sturdy footwear is a good thing. Because I don't know if you can tell from up here, but it is a hell of a drop. I don't want to go in there. Alright, now you can cross Mungo. Thanks for joining us on another one of our adventures around Australia at 80 Ks. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to see more of us being idiots and seeing Australia while we do it. And let us know what you think in the comment section below.